In tonight's Fox 7 Focus, the state Republican Party announcing today it is censuring one of the most powerful people in Texas politics, House Speaker Dade Phelan. The Texas GOP says Phelan had been unfaithful to Republican principles and priorities. Joining us to talk about this is Scott Braddock, editor of QuorumReport.com. Scott, thanks for being here. Of course. Good to see you, John. Good to see you as well. So this censure overwhelmingly passed the Republican mm -hmm. Executive Committee. Uh, 55 to 4 was the vote. Came on the heels of a lot of mm -hmm. anti-Dade Phelan rhetoric. Are you at all surprised that they took this step? No, uh, the Speaker and the Texas Republican Party have been at odds over uh, quite a few things for the last couple of years. Um, and in this resolution, what you see is the civil war uh, within the Republican Party just getting even more intense, I think. And, and as you mentioned, um, the party upset with the Speaker for, quote unquote, not adhering to certain Republican values. But if you look at the resolution, what they're mainly upset about is a couple of things. One is the impeachment of Attorney General Ken Paxton, uh, who uh, Speaker Phelan would simply say that Paxton is corrupt and he needed to be impeached and he has not backed off that at all. Um, and the other thing is that they're upset about the fact that there are Democratic chairs in the Texas House, which speaks to the way that Texas government works. And even if the Republican Party of Texas was successful in getting rid of Speaker Phelan somehow, which I don't think that they will be, of course he is up for re-election this year, but if he was gone, uh, whoever the next speaker would be would have to deal with the same reality, which is that Republicans and Democrats have to work together to accomplish big things at the Texas Capitol. Yeah, and, and you hone in on an important point, I think. It's not, you know, expelling him or anything like that. It's just sort of a, a like a stern warning, right? Tell us, what, is, what exactly is the censure? Well, the censure uh, technically should allow the Republican Party to spend resources against the speaker in his reelection effort in Beaumont. As you know, he's from Southeast Texas. Uh, but as a uh, former SREC member, one of the former members of this same board said to me this afternoon, the, the, you know, the party just doesn't have the money to be doing that right now. Basically, this amounts to, as you said, sort of a warning or, you know, as uh, some folks would say, this is going to end up being some mean tweets. From the Republican Party towards Speaker Phelan, I don't think it's going to have that much, uh, you know, impact on his uh, re-election effort. But it does allow for his critics to say, you know, one more thing that that they can paint as being negative about him, which is that the official apparatus of the Texas Republican Party is against him. You mentioned mean tweets immediately after the censure announcement. We uh, heard from Ken Paxton, who uh, posted mm -hmm. on X, formerly Twitter, quote, good job, Texas GOP. Uh, that came about a week after former President Donald Trump said he is endorsing Phelan's opponent. Mm -hmm. uh, how much of an effect do you think this could have? A lot of money is already being spent against him by various third party groups and the two Republicans who are running against him in his primary in Beaumont. Um, but look, this is a concerted effort to try to take down the speaker. You know, we haven't even mentioned the fact that Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick has also entered the fray here and has attacked Speaker Phelan as well. Uh, just the other day, he texted a video uh, to Republican voters uh, in the Beaumont area, blasting Phelan uh, and saying that he doesn't really support uh, President Trump. Uh, I think that the speaker's taking his race very seriously. You know, he's running a, a professional campaign uh, to win that uh, seat, uh, to win that reelection uh, in Beaumont. I think if he does win uh, his reelection, then he's likely a shoe in to remain uh, as the Speaker of the House. And as you know, all last year, Patrick and Phelan uh, clashed you know, on multiple occasions over multiple issues, including the impeachment of Ken Paxton. Uh, and they really did not have a good working relationship whatsoever. Uh, that's an understatement, to be sure. Um, if Phelan is still the Speaker and Lieutenant Governor Patrick's still the uh, Lieutenant Governor, uh, then you're going to see those guys clash in an even bigger way, uh, potentially, in the next legislative session. And just how ugly that would be. It's hard to say. Uh, Scott Braddock, editor of CornReport.com. Scott, thanks as always for being here. We always appreciate your insight. It's my pleasure. Thank you.